Potter, un tío. Sure. Colour should. Colour. Thanks. Is it good, Shiva Fan Rai? Yes, it was open. Yes, um, yeah, I, I suppose the question you're probably asking yourself how did you guys throw that away in the last week? Unfortunately, yes. Um, definitely created enough opportunities. Um, one or two just before half time. Um, Mara's knock on, just, I think that could have been a like, almost like a, a nail in the coffin. I um, mean, just the last 20, if you keep Leinster, it doesn't matter what team they pick, if you keep Leinster in the hunt and they feel that they're in, they're, they're in there, um, you have to be, your game management's got to be, be good. And I think that last 20 minutes of game management wasn't good enough. It seems because, I mean, especially in that first half, you guys managed to stretch them quite easily at times. Um, and then in that second half, when you needed to actually, um, especially these last mm. two, five minutes, um, it almost looked like the guys panicked a little bit and, and weren't as composed as they should have Yeah, but I think we, we didn't manage to get into, into our default attack shot um, and then to, to kick unorganized. Um, just, you're going to put yourself under pressure. So we just didn't manage to to get back into our default shape, just to, to almost get comfort in the shape and, and outwork them from there. And then when we kick the ball to them, they, can, they could punish you, and unfortunately they did. You feel like it almost was a way, a mirror of your season, a way that there's quite a bit of promise, almost like that first half, but then also things that just go wrong that you guys. I, I would say yes and no. Um, I think in the, in the in the middle part of the season, we were too one-dimensional, didn't create enough. And I think like tonight, you could see um, a lot more dynamic attack, um, a lot better movement, uh, chances created. Um, and then to to then the last five minutes to, to fall flat almost from that, um, I think you can say that that, that could be the feeling. Um, massive growth, but we, we had opportunity to, to beat the number one team to another round. And, I just, just didn't do it at the end. Morris, you know, from your point, uh, it's not catch the same thing. So just, um, how did it feel? The, you guys did almost everything to win the game and then threw it away at the end. Yeah, I think, you know, you summed it up perfectly. We dominated most of the game. Uh, most areas of the game, um, I think, you know, it, that last, let's say the first half, let's start there, I think we could have executed better, I think we could have put more points on the board, um, we knew that they were going to come back and fire shots, I think we put them under a lot of pressure We, with our attack, which forced uh, yellow cards, um, penalty tries, so, you know, that's that was really good from us, and then we just gave it back to them on a silver platter, um, with our uh, discipline, wasn't good enough, and then, yeah, uh, just just not good enough in that aspect, and then I think that's what obviously uh, sums it up for me. Did you feel a shift in that sort of last 20? Um, you guys had quite a few penalties against you in that time, and obviously it's difficult to recover when you penalty, penalty, penalty. Yeah, I think it's difficult, and you know, we, we came up with, they also had a yellow card in, in that time, so we we knew that we had to play, and we knew that they can only do so much with how many they had, how many they had on the field, and um, we let them out easy with our penalties. So um, silly silly errors actually, um, and then yeah, then it, then it's difficult. I mean, Lens is a quality side; doesn't matter who plays. So once they get into your uh, twenty-two, they they will execute, and, and they did that. So yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, Kev. Yeah. Kev, looking at your record and your objective figure, the losses like that, how much of a toll do you take on it? I mean, it's been quite a century team of run in front of results this season. You know, how much of a toll does this kind of results take on it? I think the, the promising thing is, is um, the last 68 weeks we've shown potentially where, where we can be. Um, I think after tonight, we needed the five points to, to keep ourselves alive in the in the top seven or eight, whatever you want to refer to. So this this feeling is is um, 
just feeling sorry for the guys after a season of long season, really hard work, uh, seeing the intensity and the intent in training. Uh, I, w- I wanted the guys to win tonight, to, to make it special for various reasons, to keep us alive. Um, they're really working extremely hard. Um, Jakob Krill's last home game, 15 years ago, he was a scrawny little 19-year-old flanker running around here to, to have a, a career like him. So it's not, this, this feeling is, is um, it's almost a feeling of the wind getting knocked out of you because, like I said, if you weren't good enough to win the game, then probably would have felt different. But we did more than enough to, to win the game. But then now going forward, how do you go about that? You need to make sure that within the season, you know, you might push for this play of sports and country that there's no doubt in your place. I think if you, before tonight, I think ourselves, the Sharks and the Bulls had the same amount of wins. The, the, the difference was, was uh, um, bonus points. And we, we, there was a period of about five, six games where we didn't get one bonus point. Um, and that's what I said earlier, is we didn't play dynamic enough rugby or uh, flowing enough rugby to get bonus points and score four tries. And if you lose, it's like this, two, three, four, five points. Um, so when, when we lost in one patch in the season, when we lost, we lost quite badly. Um, so I think, again, hats off to the guys uh, to turn it around, to score four, five, six tries per game. I think the, we've really averaged a, a lot of tries the last um, eight games. And then it's just, like I said, game management, under pressure, uh, the one or two decisions. Um, I don't think we conceded one penalty in about 50 minutes. Um, and then to concede four or five in a row, like Mara said, silly, silly penalties um, is is the point of difference sometimes. Um, so that accumulation of all the small little things, um, as sore as it is now, um, we're really excited of where, where we are with the team, where we're going with the team, uh, areas of growth and we're really excited for, for, for next season. At one stage, I don't really think we were good enough to, to beat the other South African teams. And at this stage, I think we, we can be really competitive. Coach, is coaching against Lynch the big challenge in that it doesn't seem, uh, it doesn't matter who they put on the field. So you're less bothered about actually wearing the jersey as opposed to coaching against the team structure. Um, tell us about that challenge because it, it seems like a fairly unique thing. You know, the actual personnel doesn't seem to I think you can compare it to, to the Crusaders a little bit. Um, is, I mean, I almost said small, it's definitely not small. Young Pen, Pendergrass tonight, first game, uh, superstar with the, the Irish under 20 team, man of the match performance. I think it's exactly that, Liam. It doesn't matter who they pick, um, this, the system seems to flow that so much, and, and there's so much co- cohesiveness and almost rugby, IP, and game understanding. Um, it literally doesn't matter who they pick. You, you, the difference between quality is probably one or two percent. Um, and I think there's a reason why they they still undefeated this, this season um, because a, a big quantity of, of the squad tonight played against the Stormers there as well. So um, they've got quality all round. Uh, obviously, it's something it's something uh, inspiring to see um, when we spend the week in Leinster. Uh, we we dig a little bit to, to find out what they're doing, how's it working, the school system, how's everything complementing one another. The system is definitely working there. Thanks, Dan. Just one last one for me. Uh, look back at the season, Kersh, if you think of this game and the Ulster game, those two games, um, there's a matter of what, five points in that, and that's the difference between that and the first one. Seriously. hundred percent. Also, um, I think we, we were good enough to, to beat the Sharks here. We had a bad 20 minutes and, and they changed the game. So it is it's literally, um, like I said, it's literally that those two, three games. Like I said, even even winning some of the games and not getting a bonus point makes a difference. So if I remember back correctly in the 2016-17 uh, Super Rugby season, the biggest difference between 17 and 18 was the amount of bonus points. Even if, if you did lose a game, uh, all the bonus points make for additional wins. So if you look at Leinster, I mean, they haven't lost a game, but if they had to lose one or two, I think the, the difference would be five points in, in the total log, um, just because they get so much bonus points uh, in scoring as well. So, small moments. If you look at the Ulster game, I think it's probably the first 15 minutes we weren't good enough, and the rest of the game we were, we were good enough, similar to Glasgow last week. Um, and this game is probably the last 15 minutes, so even the last five minutes. So, 
small margins at this level, but that's that's a difference in this level. Can we take the final three, please? Uh, yeah, just a few words on on Yaku. It was his, probably his final game in this ball and his last game will be next week. Um, he ends a career, uh, ending his career. Um, just a few words on for both of you guys on his impact that he's had and what he meant to the team. I'll, let, I'll leave the men to the team t tomorrow. Um, I think I had the privilege to, to join in 2009 when he was under 20. And like I said, to see that, that scrawny small flanker developing the man that he's become um, on the field, off the field, the difference and the impact. Um, he's had an enormously tough life. And to see, to see the product he put out tonight, even with very sore knees and... Um, age slightly against him to still play 80 minutes tonight is exactly who Jakob Krill is. He's probably one of the toughest men I've ever met in my life. Uh, probably one of the, the best teammates that I've, I've worked with and, and had the privilege to, to work with. Um, just relentless. He's, that's his character. That's who he is. When it's really tough, Jakob's the kind of guy you want in your team. And uh, yeah, just, just from my side, I don't think, I don't think one day... Um, he can regret one day in his professional career. I spoke to him this week and his career is literally full circle. I um, started here, had the, the privilege to go to Japan, had the privilege to go to Europe and ended ended off back here. Um, what a career, what a guy. Yeah, um, I, you know, if I can sum it up, he's a guy that, you know, he serves the team. Um, you know, he always, you, I don't remember one day coming in where he hasn't had a smile on his face. Um, Input in terms of on the field stuff, it's something you won't expect from a flanker. That he's, uh, he's, he's got a good rugby brain and um, just the, the cohesion that he brings to the team, he brings people together and he's done a lot of um, off the field stuff for us lately as well and um, that just filters down into the team for us and um, yeah, I have to take my hat off for him for taking on a lot of roles other than just playing. So, yeah. Two more guys, please. Walter? Okay. Right. Right. Happy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.